The US stock market is up 19% this year and close to hitting all-time high. And our Malaysian ringgit is close to hitting all-time low. US want to hear regret. Malaysia also want to hear regret. And me looking at my ringgit, I really am dead. Don't know who to hit. Hey guys, it's HY, your investing friend. Okay, now let's be serious. In 2023, our ringgit has fallen to its record low against US dollar and our neighbor Singapore. Just to show you how much ringgit has fallen, in 1993, our USD to ringgit exchange rate is 2 ringgit and 50 cents. But in 2014, it has further depreciated to 3 ringgit and 50 cents. And now in 2023, the USD to ringgit exchange rate hit a record low of 4 ringgit and 70 cents. Similarly, the Singapore dollar to ringgit exchange rate also hit a record low of 3 ringgit and 50 cents. <sighs> I know you're very angry and sad. I also very angry and very sad. Our ringgit has been dropping so much, it's because nobody wants to hold ringgit now. So the demand for ringgit is low. And when demands drop, ringgit's value also drop low. There are a few reasons why the demand for ringgit is so low. Number one, our Malaysian interest rate is far below US interest rate. Currently, Malaysia interest rate is at 3% and US interest rate is already at 5.5%. It is 2.5% difference. I ask you, if you can get 5.25% interest rate from saving in US, would you still want to put your money in Malaysia to get 3%? Mm -hmm. No ma, right? That's why people are throwing ringgit to put money into US now. Similarly, in Singapore, they control their currency to follow a basket of foreign currencies including US. So when USD is strong, Singapore dollar also become very strong Victory. and the only loser is our ringgit. The second reason why Malaysian ringgit dropped so much is because China recovery from COVID is not as strong as expected. China is Malaysia's biggest trading partner. They are now facing problem recovering from COVID lockdown and also property crisis. That's why the demand for Malaysia's export dropped a lot. Ooh. As a result, ringgit drop is because China's demand for ringgit is lower now. The third reason why Malaysia ringgit has been dropping so much is because Malaysia's competitiveness is now slowly losing to our neighboring countries. Recently, you must see a lot of news like Intel putting 30 billion US dollar and taxes in Truman investing 14 billion US dollar in Malaysia. These are great news to Malaysia and it shows that Malaysia is indeed very strong in global semiconductor supply chain. But at the same time, we also see that Malaysia is losing Thailand, Vietnam, Indonesia in attracting Apple, Google, Tesla, BYD. Amazon to come invest in our country. Our FDI has dropped a lot historically and the money is flowing into other countries. So if they don't reform our education system and ensure political stability and if they continue to focus on bo -ya -bo -ja, things like nurse skirt is too short, too sexy or banning Coldplay concert or Blackpink concert then we really kill out. Hopeless. Actually, Bank Negara did a lot of effort to stabilize inflation and control our currency from weakening further. Since 2022, Bank Negara has increased OPR by 5 times, from 1.75% to 3%. People always complain whenever Bank Negara increased OPR rate. But I think Bank Negara did a very great job already. If they don't increase OPR rate, our ringgit will become even easier today. But now they are in a very very difficult position. They cannot increase OPR furthermore. Abo, Malaysia will not be able to pay their housing loan anymore. So what Bank Negara is doing now is instead of increasing OPR rate, they intervene in Klaibo market to push up interest rate in the corporate sector. OPR is interest rate for public, Klaibo is interest rate for corporate. Besides, they also interfere in the money market by buying up ringgit to slow down the depreciation. What else can they do? So the question now is, is Malaysia doomed? No, because weaker currency is not that bad for developing countries. Most developing countries depend on export to grow their economy. This is the same for Malaysia. When our currency is weak, it will be more attractive for people in countries with stronger currencies. Because our products and services become cheaper for foreigners to buy, 
That's why you see Singaporeans love to come to JB to pump their petrol. So since our currency is quite weak now, we can expect our exports to slowly pick up from here onwards. Especially when our Taiko China's economy recover. In short, a slowly depreciating currency is good for a developing country, but not good if the currency fluctuates a lot like now. So what should government do? Mm? Don't come and ask me to become the minister. Well, 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 we get Boma. So these are a few things that we wish our government can improve. Number one. Malaysia really needs to up our tourism game. When compared to our neighboring countries, we really kasu la. We are really bad in attracting tourists. People know about Thailand, Singapore, Indonesia, but they don't know about Malaysia. Our leaders needs to put down their egos and belief and be more open-minded. Learn from our neighboring countries. Tell them who has the best durian. Laksa. Don't let other countries claim our national food. We have many medical doctors, so can push for medical tourism law. We also have a lot of accountants, so we can push harder for outsourcing businesses in Malaysia law. Number two, we really need to improve Malaysia's competitiveness. There are a lot of long-term structural problems that need to be solved. For example, our education system. I just noticed that. Primary school students today are learning maths and science in Malay, not English. What? I understand that Bahasa Malaysia is our national language, but maths and science are international subjects. Takkan you can go to Harvard and speak Malay when you discuss science and maths projects with your friends? I don't know lah. What do you think? Number three, which is also the most important thing, Malaysia really needs to improve on maintaining. Our political stability and please no more flip flop in policies. I I know roti canna is also our national food, but don't today say A then tomorrow flip into B. This is not how we build trust in global stage, ma. Having all said that, the most important thing is what we ourselves can do. Number one, control your spending. When our ringgit depreciate, our imported goods also become more expensive. For example, your iPhones, your gentlewoman bag, your concert tickets. So think not only one time, two time, but three times whenever your hand got time want to spend. Think whether you really need this or you just nafsu want to buy. Control following your own budget or grow your own vegetables. Number two, save in other currencies. When our currency is weak, then you save in other currency lor. Modern problem require modern solution ma. You can use wise to save money in other currency. Number three, make money in other currency. The best way to overcome weakness in ringgit is to make money in other currency while staying in Malaysia. Ding. There are few websites that offer freelancer jobs to us. Learn some international skills that the world needs, like website design lah, poster design lah, uh, digital marketing lah. Or you can even use VPN to open TikTok account and sell affiliate products to other countries. There are many opportunities if you look for it. Okay, number four, invest in overseas stocks or ETFs because these stocks or ETFs are in USDs. So when price go up, you make money in USD. In M Plus Global app, you can see a list of US stocks and also different ETFs. They also show like whether this stock is Shareya or not. And the most famous ETF to invest in the whole US stock markets are. BOO, QQQ, and DIA. Having said that, don't invest in things that you don't understand because if you make money from strong currency but lose money from investing, no use one. As a Malaysian that love my own country a lot, sometimes ah, I think our country is worth so much more. Of course, you must be frustrated when our currency drop a lot. Me too. Aku juga. Woye shi. Especially when you work as hard as your friends in Singapore, but they can go to Japan travel every year. I can only consider to go Penang and eat chai kway teow. I also remind myself that ringgit depreciation is not a long term thing. Things should get better when our FDI is slowly coming in, and also when exports and global economy slowly improve. I really hope we can grow along with our country. Until then, stay safe and stay strong investing. I will see you in my next video. Malaysia boy.